Hi, I'm Paul Wilson. And I'm Anthony Bernini. And we're here from Calibrated Power, home of Duramax Tuner, to talk about what you need to run E85 in your EcoBoost. Now, Anthony, you're our resident EcoBoost expert. These trucks are a lot of fun, Paul. There's a lot that goes into them. We deal with them all the way from tune only to 500 plus horsepower and full E85 setups. And we also deal with a wide range of these EcoBoost trucks. Uh, I, I know we've tuned some Expeditions, some Rangers, and a lot of Raptors and a lot of F-150s. Now, there's even some differences here because when we say EcoBoost, that covers a huge range of engines. Specifically, which ones do we work with? The specific ones we work with uh, to start are gonna be the Raptor and the F-150s. Lately, as you might have seen on our social media, we've been doing you know, the Rangers, some of the newer Rangers, the Expeditions, and a few other ones in kind of sprinkled in there. Absolutely, now these engines that we deal with most often come in a 2.7 or a 3.5 liter uh, displacement. The, the 2.7's running E85, very different than a 3.5 liter running E85, correct? Correct, yes. Um, so when you talk about E85 setups, which is gonna be a bulk of what we're talking about, the main thing is gonna be for the 3.5 liter. Can you do, I get calls every day, I know the rest of the guys do too, can you do E85 on 2.7 liter? The answer is yes, of course, depending on the year. Anything 17 and up can 100% run on E85. There's just a lot more aftermarket space to do so with 3.5 liter on 17 plus trucks. Gotcha. So our bang for the buck of running E85 is going to really be there when you have a 3.5 liter. The 2.7 liter, man, if you really want to get everything you can out of running E85, you're going to be spending a lot on parts to kind of maximize that, correct? Absolutely, yes. Okay. So I want to get into what some of these parts are. Now, like you had mentioned, the 2017 and newer are the most common for us to work with on an E85 conversion setup, but I know the first thing we do is tune them. Can you tell our, our viewers a little bit about tuning for these trucks? Yeah, so absolutely on the tuning. Um, we have two different platforms. Our most user-friendly and easiest to use platform is our EasyLink. As you might see advertised, we have it for the Cummins, the Duramax, and the Power Strokes, and then also for the EcoBoost trucks. So what that entails is we are using your phone as a communication device wirelessly through the OBD port. And with everything being cloud-based, everything you need is gonna be on your phone, tablet, handheld device, whatever you're using. And there, um, again, depending on the year, you're gonna have several different tuning options. If your truck does run E85, you will have ethanol-specific tunes. Otherwise, your other tuning is gonna be smart octane. And kind of what that means is you can run anywhere between 87 octane and small blends of ethanol, and the truck's actually gonna automatically adapt. Nick and the guys in R&D did a great job of getting those tunes set up for that. Yeah, that smart octane sensing is really cool. Um... Basically, your truck already came equipped with all of the sensors and all of the hard parts it needed to run a basic blend uh, of E85. So I think we run them up to E40 is pretty common. We're pretty comfortable with guys pushing it to the edge. Why don't we go full E85 on a stock truck? So a couple of reasons why we don't do that. Um, let's just take a uh, truck we have behind us for an example. Sure. Uh, relatively new, I believe it's a 17 or 18 F-150. This one actually has a full E85 setup now. Typically when we talk about performance on the diesel side, you look at a truck and you can tell like this thing's got a full setup. Yeah. The F-150s and the Raptors are good at being incognito about it because I mean physically the appearance doesn't change. It's all calibrations and some small hard parts. So as far as hard parts go on what it takes to get there, there's a couple different options. On the F-150s, we're going to have to do a couple things. So bare bones minimum to run ethanol, of course, tuning. Tuning from us at Calibrated Power Solutions. There are other options out in the market space. Yeah, there's definitely other companies out there who will allow you to run E85 with their tuning. Correct, yes, and I should say it's really up to the customer. You have to find what's best for you. And, you know, doing your own research is gonna play a huge part into that. Absolutely. Okay, so we know there's some hard parts. Let's talk about those hard parts. A bare bones setup, you need the tuning. What else do I gotta get? Other bare bones setup would be your in-tank pump. First thing is your stock fuel pump can handle the small blends of ethanol, but to make a certain amount of horsepower, we need more of a volume of fuel. So that's where that intake pump to move the actual you know, volume of fuel comes into play. So that's the first step. So I know I've, I've read and I, I've tried to learn a little bit about this. Forgive me, I'm more of a diesel <laughs> guy on this side, but, but basically what you're saying is that because we're running E85, we need more volume of fuel. Why is that? because it requires more fuel to make a certain horsepower number. Um, I should say you can kind of compare it to a lift pump on a diesel. Okay. Let's say an LML, for example, we tell guys, hey, tune five, you have to have a limp pump. Why is that? Well, I mean, the stock fuel pump can't keep up with what we're demanding, so we introduce a secondary pump where we upgrade the fuel system. 
Gotcha. Same thing kind of goes for comparing the two is you have to have an upgraded in tank pump to keep up with the volume of fuel we need to make a certain horsepower number. Okay, good. Okay, so I got my low pressure or my, my uh, supply side of fuel heading up to the truck. Do I need anything else? Yes. So next comes the high side. Now this can go two different options. When we first started getting into the EcoBoost tuning a few years ago, we we're doing the high pressure pumps. So similar to what you might consider a CP3 on a diesel, it's the high pressure pump, it's mounted on the motor, and that's what actually feeds your injectors. Okay. Now you can run, or I should say the stock pump is going to max out just like you know a stock CP3 will because we're using more fuel, but we have to get the power up. So what we go with, you can do a 30% or 60% over XDI pump. That's what we typically prefer and we use a lot of. Otherwise, my personal favorite, and it's a little bit more cheaper of an option or cost efficient, is going to be port injectors. So upgrading the port injectors on your 17 and up truck, pairing that with your intake pump is going to allow you to run full 85. That's like the bare bones setup. So I could do tuning, an intake pump, and a set of injectors to take my 17 F-150 to a full E85 and actually maxing out the benefits of E85. Give me a ballpark, man. W what am I looking at for cost? $10,000? No, no, you're well well below that. <laughs> I mean, you factor in the tuning, the injectors, and of course, miscellaneous gaskets, things like that. For pumps and everything, we're probably around 2,000, if not a shade under. Bare okay. bones tuning and uh, E85 setup. Now that's that's not bad. I mean, no. tuning E85. I got injectors. I got yeah. an intake pump. I got I got actual custom Easy Link tunes. I'm in. Uh, at least based <laughs> on my experience. So already sold. But but there's also some some ways to maximize this. I know there's there's always some ancillary parts, some supporting mods mm -hmm. that could make this even better or let me run at peak power with a lot more comfortability. Correct. What are some of those other supporting mods our guys should be considering? So a lot of other supporting mods. Um, AMS, a company we're working pretty close with, who's actually local to us here, they have quite a few other components. So first thing I steer guys, similar to recommended an intake on a Duramax or just a diesel truck, is the AMS inlet pipes. Inlet pipes in a tune by themselves, AMS claims probably about a 30, 40 horsepower gain. Wow. And it's gonna flow 222, and that's exact on the website, you can reference <laughs> it, 222% uh, more air than what the stock pipes offer with their very smooth bends that they have. Again, similar to an intake on a diesel. Um, so you have the AMS inlet pipes. Okay. Um, and then all that fresh air coming into the turbochargers is nice, but we also want to keep the air as cold as possible. So we'll talk about charge air. Since these are turbocharged vehicles, an intercooler is going to be a huge part of it. Right. Um, so working with AMS again, that's a five and a half inch thick intercooler that they offer. So, you know, charge air temps, uh, I mean, really these, tr just to say these trucks are smart. Yeah. If they see higher exhaust gas temperatures, similar to our LML EGT back down, where the truck's going to pull power not to the point where you're going to feel like, you know, the truck get laggy or unresponsive, anything like that, just to keep it safe. So it has like, you know, charge air temperature sensors, it has EGT sensors, all of which play a factor into the power on the truck. So we can get cold air in and get the hot air out. That's going to make the most efficiency for your full 85 setup. Okay, gotcha. Got to gotta get that cold air in, got to keep it cold with the intercooler. Um, I know we've also talked a little bit about downpipes with high flow cats and a little bit about turbo adapters. I think downpipes with high flow cats is pretty apparent. We got to get hot air out of the truck as quickly as possible. That'll help keep things cool. I get that. I think that's a pretty obvious one. Tell me about the turbo adapters. So the turbo adapters, um, it's when you're talking about the downpipes to the rest of the, or where the turbo adapts to the downpipes, um, similar to like guys doing, um, intercooler boot or intercooler pipes on a diesel. Yes, intercooler pipes will help, but they still have the restriction going to like a stock intercooler or off the turbocharger. Gotcha. So I mean, three and a half inch thick intercooler pipes are still going to have the restriction. So what we do is we have the turbo adapters that essentially opens that up. So it's not going right out of the turbos into a restriction into the free exhaust. It's just one smooth bend um, and kind of easy way to get the exhaust gases out. I gotcha. Okay, that makes sense to me. Uh, Anthony, I think this is a really good rundown of taking your 3.5 liter EcoBoost to run a fully 85 conversion setup. I, I know it's rare, usually we start off with the conversation with guys asking, how do I run E85? But just real quickly, for anybody who's been following along going, why on earth would I wanna run E85? What are the benefits of running uh, this fuel? 
So a couple benefits of running the fuel, um, and a lot of the other guys here have trucks. I know Chris had his Evo that ran full 85, and it's a benefit because these trucks are fun. They're a lot of fun stock, a lot of fun tuned. We want to keep things as efficient as possible. So if you want to run higher horsepower, give your truck the ability to run you know, different power levels because, I mean, gas is fun, but everyone wants more, right? <laughs> we always get phone calls, guys, like, what's, what's the next step? What can I do? Well, this is the next step. Tuning. You know, you go to full 85 setup, you want to get the most out of your truck and still have it be fun. This is a safe and efficient way to do that. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for letting our viewers know. Guys, if you want to learn more about how to convert your trucks to E85 or you just have any questions and you want to talk to us, give us a shout. 815-568-7920. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs>